Our next guest is no stranger to the sacrifice and courage you need to be an effective voice for life. She courageously left Planned Parenthood and exposed Planned Parenthood and through her work has empowered over, guess how many abortion workers have left after she left? Guess how many? 600, more, 600. 600 workers have left the abortion industry through her work with And Then There Were None. She also started Pro Love Ministries to innovate and grow the pro-life movement as well. So please welcome icon Abby Johnson to the stage. Thank you so much. Uh, it's always such an honor to be here, always such an honor to be here with so many young people. Where are my, where are my high school students at in here? All right, where are my college kids? I think high schoolers need to redo. Where are the high schoolers at? Awesome. Okay, now where are the old people? I love it. I think the boomers win. <clears throat> oh man, so awesome to be with all of you guys. Um, oh man, I don't have a, they didn't give me a timer or anything. Shoot. Okay. Tina, you're gonna have to get, oh no, it's right there. Okay, good, okay. <laughs> Woo, okay, that's good. Um, okay, listen. The number one threat right now to young women, to women who are considering an abortion is a medication abortion pill. Why? Because you can get it anywhere, at any time. I live in the great state of Texas. The great Republic of Texas. The United States of Texas. And, and you know, everybody's so excited because after Roe fell, There were quite a few states um, that had trigger bans in place, and so abortion was automatically, technically illegal. But what can you access in those states? The abortion pill. Right now, right now, if I wanted to on my phone, I could very easily go to over 70 websites and I could access the abortion pill for a little over $100. In fact, even if I wasn't pregnant, which I'm not, I don't even have the ability to get pregnant, I could go to one of those websites right now, even though I'm not pregnant. And I could, in a preventative sense, get the abortion pills just to have them in my cabinet if I wanted to, just in case I got pregnant just in case I knew someone that got pregnant. Guys, this creates a safe haven for who? Abusers, for sex traffickers, for boyfriends who wanna slip these medications into their girlfriend's drinks. This is not the country that we want. This is not the America that we want. So we have started a campaign at And Then There Were None, our former abortion clinic worker ministry, called Little Pills That Kill. Because the abortion pill does kill. And it doesn't just kill the unborn child in the womb. It also kills women. We know of a few dozen women, just the ones that we know of, that have died from these medication abortion pills. 
And we have what we believe are the Achilles heel of the abortion industry, and that is these workers who have left. They're coming out, they're telling their stories, they're talking about the egregious things that are happening inside of these abortion facilities, they're exposing them, they're putting a face to what's happening inside of these clinics, and they're telling it to the public. And I just want you to know that because of these workers, because of their courageous work with state officials, federal officials, local officials, they have been able to close down 47 abortion facilities. <laughs> and counting. Because we in the pro-life movement are not going to stop fighting until every single abortion facility is shuttered. Their doors are closed. And we expose these facilities for who they are. They are slaughterhouses of the unborn. So we have some videos on our website. I'm gonna show, we're gonna show two of those videos now. These are firsthand testimonies of former abortion clinic workers sharing their own experiences with medication abortion. When I worked in an abortion facility in Virginia, I would give abortion pills to patients. They would report back that they bled for weeks, intense pain, cramping, incomplete abortions, mental distress, infections, blood clots, and some would even be afraid that they were dying. Patients would routinely tell me that their experience was more intense than we told them it would be. But I have my own story as well. Let me say this. My experience with abortion pills was the most horrifying experience. It was so traumatic that I had to move from my apartment because I did not want to return and re-experience that trauma and pain every single day. Anyone that's telling you abortion pills are not a big deal is just lying to you. We would actually give the first pill to the patient in this little cubicle kind of area. Um, and that should have been a doctor. And I would explain to her that bleeding would occur. Um, it wouldn't be nothing more than a period. Um, so that's what I was led to believe also, that it was just gonna be, you know, kind of like just a period, a light period. It's, it's early in the pregnancy, so it shouldn't be like a surgical procedure. But I felt that it was wrong for me administering it because I have, I'm not a medical doctor. It was this one particular um, lady that, again, alone and scared, coming in there trusting, and they just um, pushed her off, just like um, you're at a Walmart or something, or purchasing something. Here, take this, you'll be okay. Don't worry about anything. She didn't take too well um, to the medication, and she was bleeding out. So that's our newest campaign. We want you to... Go to the website, share it. We have information in our booth, at our number one booth. Really quickly, I want to tell you this. Sharing the truth is the most loving thing you can do. Telling the truth is the most loving thing you can do, especially to women who are in crisis. Telling them that we love you, abortion is not going to help you, abortion is not going to solve your crisis. But we in the pro-life movement can help you solve that crisis through love, through action, through accompaniment. That is how we can help you. 
solve this crisis. That is love. That is love in action. Love is a verb. And we want to show women what that love looks like. And it doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter what your parents believe. It doesn't matter what your family believes. It doesn't matter how you've grown up. You can be pro-life. You can be pro-life boldly. You can take that stance everywhere you go. My daughter, Grace, grew up for the first few years of her life pretty much entering and exiting an abortion clinic day in and day out. She grew up, you know, running around the halls of an abortion clinic. The first people she was around were the people that I worked with at an abortion clinic. She would play inside the recovery room where we would have women lay in these recliners, sometimes bleed out because we had perforated their uterus. She would play in those chairs. She would play with the curtains that we had separating the chairs from one another. But she's here today at the March for Life. She's here with her whole high school. I want her to stand up. Grace, stand up. I would put my 17-year-old daughter up against any pro-abort, anywhere, anytime, and she could whoop them in a debate. <laughs> So let that be a lesson. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter who your family is. It doesn't matter what they believe. The grace of God can wipe free any stain that's in your family, anything that you have done. God wants better for you. God wants better for your family. God can erase anything that we've done because God loves life and God loves you. Don't ever deny your faith. Don't ever deny who God has created you to be. Don't ever deny the gospel of life. Amen. God bless you.